So this is episode three of Red Dead Redemption 2 Sucks. Now I'm a lot further into the game. I'm a little ways into chapter six. By this point, I've seen most of the map besides what's walled off out on the west side so far and seen a lot more of the story. And I gotta admit, I like this story. This story is a lot better than Red Dead Redemption 1. Red Dead Redemption 1 had good characters, but an overall not so great story. But what I want to elucidate more on is, <laughs> more on, uh, what I want to talk about some more is the first problem I explained to you in part one of this series, which is that being a criminal really sucks in this game. And let me tell you, I thought when I was ranting and raving and yelling and swearing about how much it sucks to be a villain in a game about being a villain, uh, I didn't realize that it was way worse than I had initially stressed. And I was furious when I first stressed it. But I was also really in a bad mood in that game. See, being in a criminal in this game is damn near impossible because of the same problem, not to repeat myself, as it was in all the previous Rockstar games of the past 10 years, which is the police are omnipresent and it's so hard to just get away. Probably the most fun when it comes to just sort of ambient criminal activity is to be able to just do like a fast hit and run on somebody and then leave with no consequences and go, ha ha ha, I got away with it. That's part of the fun of the game design. In this game, not only is it a really bad idea in any town, let alone one of the major cities in the game, to do anything in terms of criminal activity because you're gonna have to immediately run, the game mechanics that could possibly help you be a villain don't help you. You can wear a mask. It won't do shit. It won't do shit. People will recognize you when you're wearing the mask. The mask literally does nothing. As far as I can tell, and I've committed robberies wearing the mask, I've committed robberies not wearing the mask, if a witness successfully gets out of your immediate range to go yell for help to the authorities, you will be immediately identified whether you're wearing a mask or not. Literally, the masks and the bandana do nothing. Nothing. If you get away before the witness calls the cops, you get away and you might not get a bounty at all. If the police lay eyes on you or you're still in the vicinity of where you committed your crime when the police are alerted, you will be identified whether you're wearing a mask or not. By name, it'll say on the wanted thing, wanted, Arthur Morgan. That's garbage because i gotta tell you the ma the bandana mask in red dead redemption one made being a criminal fairly easy because you wouldn't get a bounty in this game it doesn't seem to affect the price of your bounty and it definitely doesn't make it harder for anybody to identify you at all it's basically useless it's either you get away scot-free or you don't the other really 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 fucking bad thing is you would think one of the best places to, you know, rob people or to be a scallywag is um, in the major cities. That is absolutely not the case. Almost everything you fucking do in a city can be a crime. Where the police will come after you and they will arrest you or kill you. And I gotta sell you that, remember I mentioned disturbing the peace is a crime. You can get disturbing the peace for saying a rude word to a lady. Anytime you look at anybody, you can choose to either greet them or antagonizing people. In major cities, saying antagonizing things is a crime. The other thing that's horrible in the major city is sometimes you will be uh, provoked by thugs or gang members. Now, this doesn't seem to be a problem in the, the, the towns out west, but especially in San Denis, if somebody... So, uh, starts antagonizing you, provoking you with, which is, I guess, a crime. Uh, they'll say like, hey, tough guy. And if you look at them and uh, antagonize the, them, oftentimes, if you do this to any kind of rough looking man, they will come and want to get in a fist fight with you and they might pull out a knife when they do it. And I really like the fist fighting in this game. It feels way better. I mean, Rockstar has been sort of, um, experimenting with fist fighting controls uh, in Red, uh, Red Dead Redemption and uh, Grand Theft Auto for years. 
this is the first time where it feels like a legitimate gang mechanic. And I gotta tell you, the, the first time I got in a fist fight with four uh, Lemoyne Raiders, I keep accidentally calling them Lemony Raiders, the Lemoyne Raiders, in a town, and I beat all four of their asses by myself fist fighting, it feels really good. Uh, the fist fighting is really intuitive, it's sort of a time button press counter that's a little bit, not not exactly, not really close, but is reminiscent of the Arkham Asylum style of timed blocks uh, can act as parries. And I gotta tell you that the, uh, the townspeople who want to fight you are pretty good at it. They'll block, they'll dodge, they'll counter you in the same way that you can do to them. So beating up four of them is pretty awesome. However, in a town like Saint Denis, you can get provoked by a group of guys. You provoke them back. I've gotten a, get in a fist fight with four guys. Again, one of them's got a knife. I think no big deal. I got metric fuck tons of health. I take almost no damage from knives, which is not realistic at all. But basically, I don't take fucking like any damage from knives. I don't know why. I don't know if it's because I got so much health. And I, I, I keep my character close to that overweight mark, which makes your stamina drain faster, but gives you less drain on your health when you get hit. So you can kind of make yourself into a tank, which is cool. Uh, and so I'm thinking, no big deal, I'm going to kick these guys' asses, it's going to be great. And I've learned that in a lot of the West, western towns, if you beat somebody up, but you don't loot their body, you won't get in trouble. And I always make a point to let people throw the first punch. So I got three guys surrounding me. One of them's got a knife. They hit me first. I beat one of their asses. And while I'm still fighting the other one, some witness goes running off going, yeah, help. And I get charged with murder for self-defense that this witness fucking witnessed. So now I am in the middle of San fucking Denis, which is key rolling with police officers. There's about as many police officers as random fucking civilians on the streets. There's a, literally a street officer at least every block, and there's a lot of blocks in this town. So by the time that somebody said, you're... Your murder, and I look at my mini map. There's one, two, three, four, five red stars that signify a police officer closing in on my position. So I run away. And as I run away, since I'm now apparently guilty of murder, the guy who was coming at me with a knife thought, Hey, I am now well within my rights to pull out a gun and start shooting Arthur Morgan in the back. So one of the guys who saw who uh, provoked me first, accosted me first with a lethal weapon, is now shooting me in the back and chasing me on foot along with five police officers as I leave this town and accrue a $40 bounty for self-defense. This is bullshit. How the fuck, why would you program the game where you can't even act surly in town? You can't fight in self-defense. If you are in town and somebody comes at you, back talks you or threatens you, if you want to fight back, you better be prepared to get a bounty and you better get, be prepared to have to deal with lawmen because you can't act like a tough guy in a Wild West game where you're a bad tough guy. You can't be like Clint Eastwood and sh shoot at people or threaten people or even talk cross to people. You can't sass anybody in this fucking game. Sassing people is a fucking criminal offense. Why? Fucking why? And I gotta tell you that there's so many side quests where you can't do the fucking side quest unless you consent to performing an honorable activity. I have murdered and robbed so many innocent people, and I have never, ever reached maximum dishonorable rating. Because I gotta tell you, killing somebody is a dishonorable offense. Looting their body is a secondary offense. Even if you loot somebody somebody else killed, it's a dishonorable offense. So, say I killed two people and looted both their bodies. That's four uh, down karmas. If I give a buck to a beggar, more honor than I just lost. So I've been permanently hovering at somewhere between 25% to 35 or 45% in the red range forever. Because throwing back a fish 
that you caught because it's too small is a crime. I was like, ah, this thing's a piece of shit. I don't even want to put it in my inventory. There's honor. I've gotten honor for greeting passerbys by saying howdy. Uh, God knows why. You give any money to anybody. You donate to your own criminal gang. If you donate to the criminal gang's uh, funds, it's honor. If you do chores around the uh, camp, the criminal gang camp, that's honor. Uh, anybody that you help, sometimes even if you're helping a criminal, is honor. So if I was doing an honorable playthrough, which I somewhat wish I had, I would have been able to max my honor in the first hour and a half, two hours of gameplay. Easy. The second you get the fishing rod, you can max your honor just fishing, for fuck's sake. And, I, and every time when somebody says, help, I'm being torn apart by wolves, I let the wolves kill him and loot his body, I kill tons of anybody who's on foot that I see out in the wilderness if I think there's nobody who's going to see you. Every time I see a camp and I approach the camp and it's a, a person who doesn't want to talk to me, some random hunter or traveler, and I kill them and take their shit, I do that every single time and I've never maxed dishonor. And so many people go like, oh, hey, you know what's great about going to Saint Denis is because you can kick the shit out of the beggars, you can kick the shit out of uh, the pickpockets, you can kick the shit out of the feminists and the guy who plays the trumpet in the street. You can accost all sorts of unique, unique people. I don't know why I'd ever want to. It would incur a huge bounty. Uh, <laughs> it would, um, I mean, at least when you reach a certain part in the game, uh, you have way, 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 way more money than you could possibly want to spend. I could probably buy almost everything in every store in the game right now, and I haven't really, you know, done all that much shit that comes to finding treasure or anything. Finding treasure is nothing in this game, even though there's treasure in this game. Because I gotta tell you, they say you can find treasure hunters um, wandering around. I have never seen in my fucking life a treasure hunter in this game. I've done one treasure hunt that was made available very early in the game, and I've never, ever, ever seen another one. I don't know where the supposed treasure hunters who have these maps are. I've never seen another one. And I do every stranger mission the second I see it. I don't know why that is. Um, so I haven't found all that much treasure, but it doesn't even matter, because just random houses got tons of fucking goods in them. Um, stealing from houses, does it give you dishonor? No. Fencing stolen goods, does it give you dishonor? No. There's a million and one criminal activities that do not decrease your karma at all. And again, just l smiling at people is positive karma. It's, it's, I don't even know why. I don't even know why I bother, because I gotta tell you, as far as I know, unlike previous games, and I might be wrong about this, because I've not yet reached the maximum negative karma threshold, as far as I know, you don't get anything for being a bad guy. I haven't seen any unique clothing options. Um, you don't get the uh, the dark horse, as far as I know, like you do in Red Dead Redemption 1, you might. And um, as far as I know, positive karma only gives you lowered store prices. So who, who fucking cares? Everything in the store is cheap as fuck. It's like a dollar and a half for 30 high ex high damage express rounds for any gun. There doesn't seem to be any variance in the cost of guns. Cosmetics in this game cost a fucking fortune. But like I said, once you get to a certain point in the game where you've done a couple of specific missions that I won't spoil, all of these, this game sucks, or mostly spoiled, uh, spoiler free, um, you'll have more money than you know what to do with. You'll be filthy, disgusting rich, and you can just buy whatever the fuck you want. Uh, which is... I would say that's not good. Um, for people who aren't kind of completionists or hoarders like me. Um, if you want to sort of make uh, side quests like home invasion robberies and stagecoach robberies uh, feel uh, important, uh, you might not want to give the player way the fuck more money. You shouldn't break the economy of the game. If you want people to feel like, oh, you know, maybe I should go hunting for money. Uh, you can make a ton of money fishing. Um, maybe I want to go rob people for money. Maybe I want to be a criminal for money. It's completely unnecessary. You do a certain uh, key story mission, and you have thousands of dollars. Thousands. 
So all those uh, clothing items and, and gun upgrades and saddles that don't do jack shit that cost like 50, 80 bucks that looked retarded expensive when you felt like a couple hundred dollars was a ton of money. Once you have like five grand, it's nothing. So it discourages you from doing more side quests. And I gotta tell you that until you get to chapter six, which is quite a ways into this game, uh, there's not a lot of stranger missions. There's not a lot of side quests and there's not a lot of ambient criminal activity that is directed to the player through logs and, and becomes something like a... Uh, there's a certain point in the game, and I don't really think this counts as a spoiler, where you can get an informant who tells you uh, to... And this is something I just did that inspired me to make this video. Uh, tells you uh, information on stagecoaches to rob. This is entirely fucking pointless. So he just told me that there is a stagecoach carrying antiques coming towards a certain road and that I should go there, wait, and ambush the wagon and steal their shit. Okay. Now I'll tell you that very, very, very early in the game, in the first hour or two, you unlock a fence that allows you to sell stagecoaches. This is great because, as far as I know, I've sold him ratty, beat-up, single-horse stagecoaches, and I've sold him really nice covered wagons that are two-horse stagecoaches. Doesn't matter, every single stagecoach is worth $40. And you can do this almost instantly in the game. This is a great way to make money. It is, in fact, way more money than you'll make doing literally fucking anything else. Except for maybe home invasions. Um, now, I'm like, that's fine. So he gives me a tip to go rob a stagecoach carrying antiques. I go, oh, that sounds like a great score. So I go and I kill all the guards and I kill the people running the stagecoach and I go and I bring that stagecoach and I'm instructed to bring it to the same fence that I've been bringing stagecoaches to whenever I felt like it throughout the entire fucking game. This is a nice stagecoach carrying antiques. What does that fence give me for this story mission? Somebody talked to me with dialogue, told me, about this, like this is something different than just stealing random stagecoaches. And and I bring it to him and he gives me, same as a rickety single horse wagon, same as a nice covered two horse wagon, same as a wagon filled to the fucking brim with weapons and dynamite, same as this wagon filled with antiques. $40, no matter what. Seriously? I would rather bring you a rickety piece of shit and you give me $5, and if I give you something nice that has nice things in it, you give me maybe $100, maybe $150, maybe even $80. They're all 40 Why? All the detail you can put in this game, and when it comes to criminal activity, it's as lazy or more so than Red Dead Redemption 1, which is a game that is about 10 years old now. This pisses me off. So now that I've done all this hunting shit, and I, I kind of like hunting, and I've done all this robbery shit, and I like that, and I've sort of gotten a little bit better at some of the challenges. The challenges in this game, I should probably end with this, because um, this has gone on pretty long. Is But this shows you that this is the third 20-minute plus video I've made where I'm like, fuck this goddamn game. Uh, the, some of the challenges you get have no real progression of difficulty. It makes no sense. First of all, the gambling ones might be a little bit of a pain in the ass because you actually have to play some of the shittier games in the game that I hate playing, like dominoes, and I hate playing Five Finger Filet, and you gotta do those to gamble for some reason. And, and being good at Texas Hold'em, anything that's worth about poker is easy for me, especially when there's no intelligence or advanced AI whatsoever, much like playing poker in Red Dead Redemption 1, it's like playing the lowest difficulty on an actual poker game. Like you ever had a poker game as a kid, maybe you had one on PC, where it simulates an actual difficulty level, some complexity to the strategy of the, uh, the AI. Well, gambling in Red Dead Redemption 1 was easy because on Liar's Dice, the AI would never bluff. Ever. Ever. It was easy as sin to win at Liar's Dice. And also, the AI would never bluff or do anything particularly smart in poker. 
So you can usually count on people to tell you they have a good hand by how they bet and how good their hand is by how much they bet. And they still do that in this game. Only rarely have I ever seen something that looked like maybe this guy was being cheeky with me when really he was holding out for a flush or a straight. That's about as advanced as the poker AI gets. But in carousing, it's like, uh, take like uh, Master Hunter, where you're mostly based around throwing weapons. I'm like, okay, level four is kill three birds of prey with a tomahawk. Do you have any idea how, how rare, first of all, any bird of prey is? Do you have any idea how hard it is to get close to a bird of prey that is not flying through the air? Because I gotta tell you, the birds fly really high up in this game. You'll never throw a tomahawk straight up, even with Deadeye, well enough to hit a bird. I still don't have, by the way, the homing tomahawk uh, recipe, which presumably might make some of this easier. You gotta get inside of the range in which a bird of prey usually will flee from your presence to hit one with a tomahawk. I've managed two because I've luckily seen eagles attacking carcasses on the ground. Otherwise, I've been trying to climb mountains to try to hit a bald eagle on top of a mountain peak because that's usually where they'll actually land and hold still for a fucking second. So shit like that is a huge pain in the ass. And, and meanwhile, hunting legendary animals is extremely easy because first of all, there's nothing particularly clever or dangerous about hunting any herbivore, legendary herbivores. And second of all, you don't have any need to protect the pelt of a legendary animal, which means whether or not it's a legendary fucking rat or something, there's no such thing as a legendary rat, but say like the legendary fox, one, which I think is one of the smallest ones, or yeah, that one. Take that, or take the legendary bear. For both of them, I would suggest like pulling out a sniper rifle with explosive ammo, because you can't damage a legendary pelt, which seeing as... It doesn't matter the quality of a legendary pelt or if you even collect a legendary pelt. Just the act of skinning a legendary animal gives you access to that pelt for crafting. The only thing that affects whether or not you've actually decided to carry off and sell that pelt or not is in fact the price you get for selling it. Meaning that you could add some serious challenge to hunting a legendary animal by incentivizing the player to hunt it with the the particular weapons you're supposed to hunt a regular version of that animal with. Because I gotta tell you, it can be a challenge to go after a grizzly bear and get it with one good clean shot. Because sometimes you could think you got the guy in the head, maybe you got him in the neck or towards the side of his head, which doesn't count as a critical shot. And then that bear rushes you and, and mauls you and it's like the revenant. You gotta fucking fight the bear with a knife for your life while he's ripping your fucking face off. And you fucked his whole pelt and almost died. Well, it wouldn't have mattered if it was the legendary bear, but I didn't have that experience with the legendary bear. I shot him between the eyes with an explosive sniper rifle round. He was very, very dead. Uh, so, uh, the hunting legendary animals is exceedingly easy. Meanwhile, hunting regular animals is a challenge, which not necessarily in a bad way, but I gotta tell you, until you've collected a bunch of weapons, especially getting hold of a rifle both with and without a scope, is a huge pain in the ass. Um, and some of the animal's requirements uh, for what to shoot them with makes no sense. The one I'm having the most trouble with is I don't know if it's possible to get an alligator snapping turtle uh, and get a perfect one because it says shoot it with small game arrows with your bow. And I do, and I kill it with one shot, and it goes from three stars pristine to one star. Why? If you get the perfect elk talisman, or the, the, excuse me, the legendary elk trinket, whatever it's called, you can actually get away with not so clean kills on a, on a pristine animal and reduce it to two stars and still have like, I don't know, maybe a 60% chance for it to still drop a perfect pelt, ma making this talisman extremely desirable to get almost as soon as possible if you plan on hunting, especially if you hunt early, because it can make it so much easier on you if you screw up and maybe have to shoot something twice or you don't get a clean shot and you have to finish the animal with a knife. And, and experiencing all the complexity of hunting is something I've actually learned to like about this game. But it's still a huge pain in the ass. And it's uh, and just um, more so to end here, this video is probably going to be about 30 minutes long. Um, 
listening to the feedback of some of the people who have commented on my Red Dead Redemption to uh, previous two This Game Sucks videos, some people have been furious. And the reason why they're furious is because, like I've explained, the first one to six hours of this game sucks. You don't have good guns. You don't have a lot of money. It can cost a little bit of money to keep your weapons in good condition. It can cost money in order to try to get the kind of weapons you need to hunt certain animals. You need to get a varmint rifle uh, as early as possible. And they cost 70 bucks. And 70 bucks in the first six hours is a ton of money. Um... Uh, you're gonna want to use guides a lot because I gotta tell you a lot of this game if you weren't using guides would involve you using like the predator scan witcher senses mode the eagle eye mode to find virtually everything I complained about how much of a pain in the, in the ass it is to raid a house without using it because you can't tell what something you can pick up and what you can't Hell, when you're picking up canned vegetables, a lot of time the model for what you're picking up is something that's open and looks like trash. When it's actually something you can eat. You would think that all uh, trash ones would appear opened and all ones you can pick up would appear closed. That's not how it works. And that little things like that go through all the item system of the game. So early on when you're poor... Uh, hunting is extremely hard and the game does not do a good job of tutor uh, using a tutorial to teach you how to hunt. There's two tutorial hunting missions. Neither of them are informative. Neither of them tell you the difference between a pristine animal and an animal that's sick or poisoned or mangy or just a one star or two star animal. I had to look all that shit up. If you want to go find dinosaur bones, which you absolutely need to find a couple things like uh, cigarette card packs, yet you're going to need to complete a set to get one of the trinkets. Uh, not every trinket is just the piece off a of legendary animal. Some of them require, uh, some of them require jewelry that is only a random drop off of looting people or looting houses. And I've only seen one out of the four or five, uh, specific pieces of jewelry that I need to find randomly in order to complete a couple of the trinkets. One of them, you have to find at least two dinosaur bones. Uh, and those you'll never find ever by yourself because they just blend in with the fucking ground. Um, unless you're looking at a guide or just wandering around in eagle eyes, which I hate because it literally puts the game in slow-mo like it's, like it's dead eye. When, if you're using something that is basically scan mode, there's no point in putting slow-mo on it. Slow-mo is for Matrix bullet time to shoot people in an urgent situation. If I just want to scan a terrain for herbs that look exactly like plants you can't pick. Uh, the herbs in the previous games were easy to identify at a distance because they had a unique look and they stood out from the terrain. In this game... Herbs look like all sorts of different shit. There's, in fact, a lot of flowers that look just like yarrow, only they're not yarrow. Same with ginseng. Uh, same with uh, Indian tobacco. Uh, and you can see the dinosaur bones at a at a at an almost silly distance because uh, they have like a glowing marker on them. If you're walking around in agonizing, uh, motion sickness inducing slow mo eagle eye sense. Um, which is something I despised from Witcher 3, because even though Witcher 3 did not slow-mo you when you used Witcher senses, it made the screen all fucked and washed out the colors and made the movement strange, which made me, a person who's not particular, particularly sorry, uh, susceptible to motion sickness, made me ill. This game does it worse. Uh, I would use the first person in this game, except for this constant head bob. I don't know why... The character movement is nice and smooth, at least in third person, under certain circumstances. But you put yourself in first person, uh, first person, and all of a sudden Arthur's got cerebral palsy and is walking around like this. And a lot of people are like, "Oh, first person looks great because like killing somebody at close range looks pretty awesome." I never fucking use it. You know what I use first person for? It makes looting a house a lot easier because movement and item acquisition is dog shit in this game. And finally. I complained about this once before, but I'm going to say it one more time. I fucking despise the item wheel. 
and not because it's an item wheel because it's something a lot of games do well. What the problem is, is if I select the gun I want to use, the next time I pull out my gun, Arthur just pulls out a different gun at random. Constantly. Say I get my tomahawk out because I'm looking for birds to hit with a tomahawk. Or say I want to have tomahawk or throwing knives out because I want to be able to kill people silently because it makes it easier to kill and murder people out in the road without attracting attention. And I go, select tomahawk. Okay, put it away. Okay, I'm just going to wait to find somebody. And I'm going to pull out my car carbine. What the fuck? Put that away. Select tomahawk. Okay, let's start that over. And he pulled out his pistol. What the fuck? Okay, select tomahawk. And keep in mind that tomahawk is on... Um, firebomb, advanced firebomb, fucking uh, dynamite, throwing knives, um, lasso, and all this other shit. And I'll go switch to tomahawk, pull tomahawk out, okay, and then sheath tomahawk, right? Not only will he switch to a completely fucking different gun without me touching the wheel or doing anything... But the tomahawk will default back to lasso. Now say I want to go into bullet time so I can see, hit an animal or a person that is passing me by at a high rate of speed. By the time, even in bullet time, even in matrix slow-mo, that it takes me to switch from bare fist or rifle or fucking uh, revolver back down to lasso, and then scroll one, two, three, four, five, six, seven places back to fucking tomahawk, and then switch from regular tomahawk to fucking improved tomahawk. Even in bullet time, upwards of four and a half, five seconds have passed in real time. And I've been doing that shit for like 20 seconds. Why? That was deliberately programmed like that, and it does nothing but make for agonizingly frustrating gameplay. And it's the little things like that, that even though I'm liking this game more and more, and I think the story is actually really good, just the general gameplay of this game is garbage. It's trash and it's dog shit. Because absolutely, unbelievably, inexcusably asinine and retarded design decisions were made that do not add anything positive to the game, I couldn't possibly think, as hard as I try, of why anybody made the weapon wheel work like that and thought it was a good idea, why nobody in playtesting went, hey, this is fucking annoying as fuck, and it, I had to deal with it constantly. This happens all the goddamn time, at any point that I plan on using a weapon, and it happens when you're on the horse. It says, oh, you gotta slow down to a trot to feed the horse. Okay, I slowed down to a trot. I selected a uh, burdock root to feed to my horse. And I see Arthur stop, reach into his satchel, say good girl to my mare, and put something in her mouth, and her health bar doesn't move, and I look, and uh, there's no missing burdock root for my menu, meaning that he went through all the animation and dialogue of feeding the horse without feeding the horse! Why? This happens every couple of minutes. And I've been playing this game for upwards of 32 hours or so. Jesus. And you wonder why I'm getting messages from people saying, thank God you're the only sane person on the internet. I want to burn the disc of this game. I want to find fucking Rockstar Studios and fucking give them a piece of my mind. I want my money back. I fucking hate this game. I've, it's fucking the worst thing I've ever played from Rockstar. I don't know if I would go that far. But this game has unfucking forgivable flaws. At this point... There's still a good bit of the game, and I have not yet sort of gone into, like, review mode where I'd say where I'd give this score. I couldn't possibly give this game a higher than an 8. And it would be an endorsement to say that I like the game to give it an 8. But the reason why it's not the 10 that all these fucking retard-level reviewers are given a game like this is because they ignore... Shit that is absolutely inexcusable. And if you're a rock fucking star, and there's stuff in your game that is retard level stupid, you've patched the game two or three times and you have not fixed them, 
how am I not going to take like a whole point off you? How am I not going to penalize you 10%? Why wouldn't I? Why would I forgive that? Why would I overlook that? What's in this game that's so goddamn good that I would excuse what's coming up now on a, a two hours worth of me bitching about this game? As much as I'm enjoying the story, I'm liking the characters, and this is a way better story than Grand Theft Auto V, which is a way better story than uh, Grand Theft Auto IV. The story of Grand Theft Auto IV fucking sucks. The story of Red Dead Redemption 1 is n pretty weak. It's not terrible, it's mediocre. The story of Grand Theft Auto V has amusing characters, but... Yeah. And especially that it's uh, sort of an allegory or a condemnation of consumerist America or something. It's the weakest satire that GTA or Rockstar's ever done. GTA 4 would count because it has virtually no satire in it whatsoever. It's played straight for some reason. Um, and the Red Re Dead Redemption 1 had some commentary in parody in it, but overall was a serious story that was mediocre. This game's got a great story, but the gameplay is agonizing. And uh, you can look forward to, I think, probably the next installment of Rockstar, uh, excuse me, Red Dead Redemption 2 Sucks is going to concern uh, character movement, uh, terrain issues, um, the way the horses work, and some other things to do with just interacting with the scenery of the game. I bet you I can do another 30 minutes on why that is terrible. Because some of the biggest fits I've thrown lately besides the cops which will probably come up again and again until the end of fucking time with this game, is how much it sucks to go through any area whatsoever that isn't fucking flat. <laughs> which is most of the map. Look forward to that, ladies and gentlemen.